next speaker comes to us from the uh, Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston uh, is Amina Wiggins, an M13, and she's going to talk about integrant expression is altered after acute and chronic cocaine use. Okay, good afternoon, or I guess still good morning. Um, my name is Armina Wiggins, and today I'm going to talk to you about um, integrating integrins into cocaine induced actin dynamics of um, addiction. So, first, we're just going to just talk about what is addiction, just period. So, it's the inability to regulate the drive to obtain drug or basically any type of behavior that you really can't control. Now, for addiction, like a lot of the mechanisms that Kafu talked about um, are very similar to some of the mechanisms that we see in learning and memory. And changes in the behavior as far as addiction is concerned as well as learning is concerned um, can be seen as changes in neuroplasticity. Now the mechanisms of neuroplasticity are um, actually potential targets that we can look at and one of the regions that we're looking at or one of the circuits that we're looking at are the um, brain reward circuitry. Now, in drug abuse, um, obviously there are a whole, whole lot more regions that are important, but the three regions that I'm just going to introduce to you are the prefrontal cortex, which is above there, prefrontal cortex, the ventral tegmental area, and the nucleus accumbens. Today we're going to focus on the nucleus accumbens because it's the area that's important for motivation as well as reward and drug seeking. And this is the area that we also believe is very instrumental in the transition from being a social user of cocaine or drugs of abuse to becoming a compulsive um, addict, pretty much. And in this area, we have a lot of different changes that happen. And that's one of the reasons why we're looking at it. So currently, there are a lot of things that they've noticed that have been changed in the nucleus accumbens. One of them are changes in the density of um, dendritic spines as well as the shape of the spines. And our lab, we believe that this is possibly mediated by changes in actin dynamics. So just to give you a quick overview, um, this is a diagram of actin cycling. We have um, filamentous actin here and we have glomular actin here. And it pretty much adds to the barbed end, and then it's severed by cofilin, which is a protein that basically just is um, responsible for the depolymerization of actin. And then cofilin, if it is phosphorylated by limb kinase, can be inactivated. So in the presence of cocaine, what we found in our lab is there's an increase in F-actin. The increase in F-actin, we believe, is um, mediated by changes in cofilin. Um, phosphorylation of cofilin. So although we see these changes after cocaine, we see changes in like the spines and actin dynamics, it's also a functional change that also takes place. And this takes place mostly in um, the dendritic spine at the postsynaptic density. Um, and chronic cocaine has been shown by many labs, not just ours, to affect the, um, the expression of glutamate receptors, such as GLUR1, NMDA receptors, as well as um, scaffolding proteins and actin binding proteins. And if you'll notice, this is also a transient change after chronic cocaine. So basically, animals receive chronic cocaine, they go through withdrawal for about three weeks, and then they receive a challenge, and then we see these changes after the challenge. Now, those, the three things that changed were spine morphology, actin dynamics, as well as um, PSD protein expression. And those things have recently been found to also change um, in response to integrin activation. So this was our first time just deciding maybe we should link these two sides together and see what we have there. So just to give you a quick introduction to integrins, because it's not, um, it's not something that's really been introduced too much in neuroscience. They're a heterodynamic um, 
transmembrane receptors. They consist of an alpha and a beta subunit. They bind to extracellular matrix, which is like your fibronectin and your laminin. And this is in the presence of divalent cations. Now they play an important role in synaptogenesis and development, cell morphology, as well as spine morphology, which was just recently shown, and cell adhesion. So it's involved in spine morphology, but it also has the other effects that I was talking about earlier that we also see in cocaine. Um, it also alters actin polymerization, um, especially after theta burst stimulation, which is shown by Kramar et al. And also it mediates the expression of glutamate receptors in the PSD, which has been shown by quite a few groups, but if you'll notice, like all of these are very recent. So that led us to the idea, okay, so maybe integrins might play a role in cocaine-induced neuroadaptations because they affect you know, the PSD, they affect spine morphology, and they affect actin dynamics. So um, for our experimental design, we used a simple sensitization paradigm. Basically, we gave animals IP injections daily of either saline or cocaine, and then they went through 21 days of withdrawal, which they just basically sat in their home cage, and then after that, they were e either given a needle stick or they were given an IP injection of 30 mg per kg um, cocaine and then sacrificed at either 30 minutes or 120 minutes after the injection. After, after the sacrifice, we dissected out the nucleus accumbens, the area that I talked about earlier, and we did a processing where we um, did a subcellular fractionation down to the PSD fraction and looked at what changes were happening after each treatment. So after acute treatment, we didn't see a significant change. We definitely saw a trend um, towards increasing um, the um, protein expression of beta-1 integrin and beta-3 integrin over time. However, it wasn't significant. However, in the chronic stage, so this is after they re have received cocaine for a week, gone through withdrawal, and then received a, a challenge, we see that protein expression in the PSD actually dramatically drops at 30 minutes after a challenge, after um, in beta-1 integrins, and it increases significantly with beta-3 integrins. So basically, just the summary of that is that Basically, we saw the increase in chronic beta-3, which is also associated with um, lamellopodia or mushroom spines. And we saw a decrease in beta-1 at that same time point. And then during the acute, we saw just basically a trend towards increase. So this is just you know preliminary stuff. Well, not exactly preliminary, but it was the first step basically, and creating kind of like a link between adhesion and, um, and psychostimulants effects on the brain reward circuitry. And, and so basically this is one of the things that led us to believe that cocaine may play a role, that integrins may play a role in cocaine-induced actin dynamics. Something else that's also very interesting, which obviously I didn't have a whole lot of time to be able to share with you, is that um, Morphological changes also happen at these times. At 30 minutes, we also see an increase in thin spines and um, we see a decrease in thick spines, which actually kind of models what we see in um, cell morphology. But that's something that we're gonna move forward with and that's something that we'll look at in the future. So basically, um, this is my lab. I wanna just acknowledge my um, mentor Peter Kalivas and everybody that helped me with it, as well as Night at T32 for paying for me. <laughs> Thank you. Any, any questions? Yeah, as far as like the time, the time point, the time points that we see changes. Okay, so in the acute setting, 
um, what we see is we see an increase in the changes in like the number of thin spines as well as the number of thick spines, whereas after chronic cocaine, we see an increase as well, but they're at different time points. So we see an increase in thin spines like just 30 minutes beforehand, and we see, I believe it's a, an increase in thick spines after that. Um, so like around two hours afterwards. Um, in to the oh, well, I'm not quite sure. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, so you're, you're looking at it, the anatomy of each of these spines. Right. Um, you're, you're suggesting that there might be more or less communication between two neurons, right? I mean, yeah. well, what, what's the anatomical inference of more or less spines? Well, um, there's basically the inference that, okay, after cocaine, we see an increase in glutamate. Um, glutamate um, release from the prefrontal cortex onto the nucleus accumbens. So it's not completely worked out as far as whether there's more activity between, you know, this group or that group, but that's definitely something that we're looking at. It's definitely something that we're looking at. Well, actually, on our side, okay, so the type of, um, which I didn't go into this because I didn't think I would have enough time to go into it, but um, I'm interested also in self-administration, cocaine self-administration, where we have the rats um, basically self-administer cocaine. And the hippocampus is really important as far as context-related reinstatement or relapse. However, it's not really, um, it's not really as important for a cocaine-primed reinstatement or relapse. So in this case, not so much, but definitely the people in the lab that are looking at um, Q reinstatement and context reinstatement, they would definitely find that interesting. Yeah? Yeah. So what about, you said you're looking at beta 1 and beta 3. Yes. What about, what alpha change do they show? Do you have any idea what, mm -hmm. what these cell-cell interactions would be? Yeah, um, actually, <laughs> okay. So I just had a little extra <laughs> something there. <laughs> well, there are a lot of different things that um, you can have interactions with. For beta-1, you know, beta-1 is the most um, common integrin. So as far as uh, neurons and in the hippocampus, they've mostly seen interactions with alpha-5 subunits. And with beta-3, they've seen mostly, um, most of the work has been done with alpha-V. But once again, there's only like a handful of papers that deal with integrins and neurons. So I've been reading mostly immunology type papers <laughs> to get my information. But it's definitely, the link is definitely there. Any more questions? All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you.